and we continue to circle the summits of Nigerian public life. Today, among other things, we're looking at the main opposition party, the People's Democratic Party, or PDP. There are some in the PDP who feel that the opportunity to get a fair chance at running for the highest office has eluded them with the emergence of Atiku Abubakar, a northerner, as the party's presidential candidate. They believe that it was the turn of the South to produce Nigeria's next president after eight years of President Buhari, who is a northerner like Mr. Abubakar. Not surprisingly, this has to some extent fractured the fragile unity in the PDP, which like the other main party is a microcosm of the delicate balances on which Nigeria's hectic mix of religion, ethnicity and regionalism is perched. Well, for more on this, I'm joined now from our studios in Lagos by Mazi Sam Ohwabunwa, a well-known pharmacist, politician, and business executive who was chairman of Nigeria's premier economic think tank, the Nigerian Economic Summit Group, and was a presidential aspirant under the PDP. Mazi Sam Ohwabunwa, thank you very much indeed for joining us. I appreciate your taking the time to be here. Um, how disappointed were Thank you, you? Sure. How disappointed were you with the PDP when it endorsed the emergence of a northern presidential candidate for 2023 in preference to someone like yourself from the south? Thank you very much. Uh, I believe that every right-thinking, God-fearing Nigerian, uh, especially those in the party were troubled. Uh, because the party has <clears throat> a known tradition uh, which is enshrined in its constitution that it will rotate and zone offices. Uh, so we kept hoping that uh, somehow or the other the party will stay by its uh, norms and uh, keep to its constitution. But uh, I, 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 for reasons uh, that still befuddle many of us, the party decided to break its own his own constitution and then threw it open. Uh, so many people who believe in principles, who believe that what is right is right, what is fair is fair, who do not change with the weather, who do not preach um, doing things out of personal convenience, we felt uh, unhappy about that. But uh, there was nothing we could do. One man or a group cannot overrule the larger part. So since the party had taken that decision, uh, we had to go through with the uh, primaries, hoping that somehow, that maybe at the end of the day, uh, the delegates will vote in sympathy with this position, but it didn't happen. Well, I mean, I have to ask you this, Mazi Sam Ohwebunwe, but what is the basis for uh, Beyond the fact that you obviously want to have a, an opportunity at, at the, the top job, I mean, what would be the basis for the PDP zoning the presidency to the South? I mean, it's not like they had been president. I mean, the PDP hasn't won an election for a while. The people who won the election were the APC. I mean, they, they tried to win in 2019 and they lost. But uh, Atiku Abubakar was not the president, so on what basis would he be denied the chance to try again? Well, it's on the basis that there's a constitutional provision that they will zone the, the positions. I didn't say if we became president or if we didn't become. Uh, the assumption, of course, was that there will be election year by year. Because if you didn't do so, if we have to wait for the not to until they become president, maybe the next, if Atiku doesn't win this time, so next four years you say, let's leave it to the not. And after that, let's leave it to the not. How would it work? Uh, it's, it's, it's just that uh, the, the Niger when it comes to a rotation, we're looking at who is the, holding the office. The office is being held by uh, a Nigerian from the northern part of the country. And so, Expectation is that the next time all those competing should be to be able to come to the south. Because we are one country, even if we uh, try to get to power through different platforms, it's the same country. Uh, because it, it, otherwise, you might just find that it's going to be 
a conspiracy of the majority uh, and they will hold power forever and, and that cannot build inclusiveness, it cannot bring the unity that Nigerians want. Uh, any federal system operates in some way of ensuring inclusiveness and there are adopt policies that will allow that to happen until the country matures, gets to a point of sophistication, political sophistication, when that will no longer be an issue. And Nigeria will, will get there someday, but we're not there yet. Yes, I mean, just to be fair, though, that the party, as you correctly pointed out, threw the process open rather than zoning it to the north or the south. So it wasn't sort of reserved for any yeah. section of the country. But have you all now healed the rift that was created by all that in the PDP, or is it still simmering underneath? In other words, have you now, you for instance, have you now embraced Atiku Abubakar as the candidate of the PDP? Well, the day the election ended, I walked over to him uh, at the velodrome and congratulated him. Uh, the day he was also being, uh, receiving his certificate of uh, return, I was at the venue uh, to show that uh, uh, I'm a team player. I, I believe that uh, my position should not override the position of the, of the whole. Uh, my point is, uh, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Uh, if the party breaks its constitution, uh, then there, should, there will always be some response. And if the party is ready to leave with the consequence of that action, that's fine. Um, so that, that's the way it is with me. I, I, I don't, uh, I'm not a bad loser uh, and, and I believe that um, at the end of the day, uh, the right thing will eventually happen. But of course, uh, you and many others are closely watching him uh, even before, you know, the elections take place to assess the way that he's handling the position and the responsibility that's been given to him. We've got, for instance, the Oshun governorship election coming up at the weekend. It's reported uh, that the PDP's presidential candidate, who should be standing shoulder to shoulder with the party's governorship candidate, has not turned up in Oshun, but is reported, and I emphasize reported, to be in Dubai. If that is the case, how much does that affect morale in the PDP going into a major governorship election at the weekend? Well, the, the way it happens is that the leader of a team, the captain of a team, if he's meeting a game, certainly uh, there will be an impact on the, on the rest of the team members. Um, I, I wouldn't blame that for what happened in AKT, but it's clear that his absence and uh, what I might think um, uh, the party didn't put up its best in AKT uh, and, 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 and that, that may have affected the results. We are hoping that the Oshun election, will, the party will rise up optimally and mobilize maximally to claim uh, Oshun because Oshun rightly belongs to PDP uh, if, we, if, if we look at what happened at the last election. Uh, and, and, and I think this was a great opportunity to reclaim that um, lost opportunity. But nobody can take that for granted because the APC is on the ground and uh, they are government in power. They have the resources and, 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 and we know in Nigeria its, it's, it's, it's power of incumbency is very strong. It's a very strong factor. And of course, the ability to raise uh, sufficient um, uh, war chest is another factor. So, uh, Oshun is a tough battle for, for PDP, but it's a winnable uh, uh, opportunity because I think the Oshun people really want a change. Uh, but like everything else, it, it's, it's, not for, it's not for the asking, it's for the taking. And if, if, if PDP does not put its best act, uh, it will be very, very uh, embarrassing to lose Oshun. And so I'm hoping that uh, the PDP presidential candidate uh, Turaki will be back uh, in time to join the, uh, the campaign. I understand the PDP has a mega rally on Thursday. Uh, it's our hope he'll be there to raise the morale of the uh, Osho people and the rest of the team that is going to fight this battle. It's going to be a tough battle 
and every hand has to be on deck. And presumably your hand is on deck as well, is it? Yeah, my hand is on deck. I, I, I don't get into a game and I, I, I play to the best of my ability as long as uh, my, um, my hands are required. Uh, I am willing to give of my hands, but uh, as you well know, you can only do as much as you can do, and as much as you are allowed to do, and as much as you're encouraged to do. I think the party has to motivate everybody. It, it has to be, it has to go out of its way to motivate and harness all the resources it has uh, to be able to, uh, you know, put a good fight uh, in 2023, starting with what is going on now. And I think the party hasn't quite risen up sufficiently to that. Uh, my prayer, my hope is that the party will rise up and uh, mobilize, uh, motivate and harness it has a lot of resources, a lot of potentials, uh, but so far um, we're just still watching to see that we get to that level where everybody will be invited on board and uh, encouraged to put their, their the best so that together we can push uh, to, to win the election. Well, let's turn to the other big issues of the day, Mazi Samo Huabunwa, and one of them would have to be the APC's Muslim-Muslim ticket. What's your reaction to that? Well, I think it's an audacious move by um, uh, Siwaju. Uh, it runs against the current. Uh, and um, for me, uh, as I've said earlier on, even in my writings, we do hope that Nigeria will get to the point someday when these issues of religion, the issues of ethnicity, and all that will not count. But we haven't gotten there. It is, it is, it is a denial to think that we have arrived there. We haven't arrived. Actually, we are getting close to there. I mean, like people keep referring to 1993, uh, when we had a Muslim-Muslim ticket. Two things happened. That ticket didn't actually materialized eventually, the result was cancelled. But at the time, people were not quite conscious. There was not this feeling of consciousness. But our leader since then has broken the country. Since then, through uh, all forms of um, 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 ethnicity, uh, hegemonism, or uh, you know, all kinds of um, uh, attitudes that showed that Religion and ethnicity became the defining uh, part of the defining considerations to, to, to be in power. The, the, the demand for uh, balancing, the demand for zoning, the demand for rotation has gotten worse, much worse than it was in the 70s, 80s. Why? Because our leaders subsequent over time, and it has been in a worsening or an increasing crescendo, if you want to use it that way, we have begun to run our country without consideration that this is a multi-ethnic country, a multi-religious nation, where we need to provide for inclusiveness. The founders of our country from the beginning knew this. They knew that this is a federation. And for a federation to work, you need to take care of the of the minority, of the majority, and look at all the different elements and give them a sense of uh, belonging. When you see a president standing, you need to see people behind him and look at the names they answer and look at the kind of clothes they wear. When you see a governor standing, you need to look at people around him. But we have gotten to the point where a president is not conscious that all the people standing around him are wearing the same type of dress, they are answering similar names right. and maybe belong to the same religion. So, so that is causing, is causing this, this push for everybody now saying, uh, maybe the only way I can get a bit of uh, 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 opportunity is that my own person is there. Person with my own religion is there. Right. Person with my own, uh, of my own uh, ethnicity. So this is what the issue is. And like I told my party, haven't broken the, um, the, 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 the zoning policy.
there are going to be consequences. Right. Okay. Let me and just let me just come in there. APC. Right. Because I, I don't mean to interrupt you. We've got less than a minute and a half left. Um, both the main parties, the APC and the PDP, essentially throwing convention to the wind. Zoning is out apparently from the PDP and religious balance is out from the APC. Given these are the two leading parties in Nigeria, what do you think the implications are for national politics, equity, stability, justice and so on in this country and uh, as briefly as you can? We are increasing the possibility of disruption of national unity, uh, possibility of disruption of national security. Uh, agitations. I mean, let's be fair. I, you know, if somebody says it doesn't matter, uh, Christi uh, Muslim Muslim uh, ticket, it's the same person who says it doesn't matter uh, uh, zoning. And yet, when it was his own turn, he said, if we didn't zone, the country would break up. If anybody tried somewhere to have a Christian Christian uh, um, uh, ticket, <laughs> Many people are not going to be happy about it. The same people are saying it doesn't matter now because they are on the side of benefit. So I think we need to get to the point where we need to be fair and be principled and stand for what is right. I have a lot of uh, Muslim friends, a lot of Northern friends, who believe that they will vote for any person, even though some of our um, political leaders are making it look like the Northerners can only vote for Northerners. When do, when do we get to this point? And Muslims will only vote for Muslims. I think it's a wrong narrative. And, and I believe that it's going to be dangerous. But thank God uh, the people of Nigeria uh, uh, have alternatives. I mean, that's why we are happy that it's a multi-party system. So they, those who are dissatisfied or who are not happy with this, uh, have another way, some other ways to express their feelings. Uh, so that, for me, is right. the saving grace. But certainly, would be a problem. Mazisama Huabungwa, I want to thank you very much indeed for joining us today. He's, of course, a well-known pharmacist, politician, business executive, and former presidential aspirant under the PDP. And he was talking to us there from Lagos.